Welcome to the Deadly Addiction channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about the Wheel of Time. This is an Amazon Prime show, and it has the potential to be something that I hold dear, but we'll get to that in a couple of minutes. This is a good attempt at trying to make a fantasy series True to the books, but knowing you're up against a lot. So, I want to talk about the general love of the series first as a novel, a series of novels, and then I'll get into the show. But I'll say, episodes 1, 2, and 3, I really liked. I'm excited for the show. But in general... There's a Love I Have for the Wheel of Time series. It's up there as one of my favorites. I have flavored so many of my adventures with some of their themes and um, use of prophecy and things like that. It's one of those series that when I talk about some of my favorite, like, I think if I had to give one series one name, it would probably be the Shinara series by Terry Brooks. The, when you encompass all the stories, how they tie together from even different genre, it is one of my favorites. Now, just favorites. But I could definitely see people saying The Wheel of Time, the successor to Tolkien in that sense. Amazing. However, it has over 14 novels, and it, you know, meaning that there's, I think, 14 and then his prequel novel and there's some little things. And near the end, the author passed away. And he had a, I guess, protege sort of uh, a person who worked with him on a lot of the books. And he took over the series. So, it doesn't have the ending that I wanted. It doesn't feel the same. I don't think it degrades the series in the novels to say that it's so good and then it gets so bad and no it's just that you can feel something changed and you feel um it resonate in the book but it's damn good he tries and these things happen so getting that out of the way when i heard about this series i put it out of my head immediately because of the Shinara series um, I was excited about Terry Brooks and the uh, was it MTV taking Shinara, and they decided to go with book two. They obviously didn't put production money into it. There was some good actors and some good um, themes in it, but it just looked cheap and never really captured my imagination of the books. So, a quick thing is um, Alan on in uh, the Shinara series, and he's played by somebody, and good actor, and he, uh, I think he played Crixus too, um, in Spartacus. Uh, but I didn't like the portrayal. I didn't like his look or attitude as Alan on, and it just didn't resonate well with me. Although I saw things that people would like about it, and people have liked about it. So I was worried about the Wheel of Time. Avoided most stuff. And then an official trailer came out. Watched it with a friend. And I had to really push down the excitement. And there's so much to see in the trailer. But they sometimes put the best things in it. They could kind of lead you astray from what it's really about. You know, that type of thing. And sometimes it's done well. So, as the day is coming where I'm going to watch it, you know, I've been through some things recently, and I really tried to go in with an open mind, and I gotta say, right off the bat, first episode catches me, I'm happy that they might be doing something Lord of the Rings did as movies, um, by the way, they're my favorites, I love them, they could be giving people different dialogue, Maybe putting a new twist on a situation to make it fit television or, in Lord of the Rings' case, the movies. 
but still have it tell that cohesive story. So, there was a couple of things that I got kind of confused, or I was not sure happened in the book type thing, or if someone was the person saying it. But besides that, I loved it. There's not much to say about, like, who you know is an actor, but Rosamund Pike as Moraine is outstanding. Daniel Henney as Lan, really like it, and I won't go through naming, well, I don't know, Madeline Madsen, Joshua Stradowski, Marcus Rutherford, Bonnie Harris. There's um, a quiet presence within these actors that to me, could reveal potential greatness, and that could just be the books and my bias, right? So I see the um, path of these characters, and that they could change things, right? Game of Thrones did it. Here and there, I'll do things a little different. Walking Dead. You know, and I try to stay true to the source material so much, but I could see the potential characters, and I know what they are in book five and seven, and so, but, I don't know if that's bias or that these are really good actors playing real naive people. And when you see the growth of the characters, we'll see. Um, there's a real feel to things. The special effects look really good. You're trying to do some... Um, interesting things to capture the books and I think they did a great job there are nitpicks here and there there are some things that look a little better than others I really think there's a potential here and when you look at the way the books go I would just assume this would be season so Shannara destroyed that they really fucked everything up in that case this looks like you're on the right foot you started off great in my opinion you've got me captivated i'm not disappointed i'm not feeling weird about the uh wardrobe and the settings i found myself really entranced by the atmosphere so it's it's right off the bat it's got me it's got the story right from the book in the sense where it basically starts where the first book starts. And again, you might have monologue or dialogue explaining some of the... or giving a voice to some of the pages in the book that are just prophecy or um, foretell the coming of the Dragon Reborn, that type thing. And in a nutshell, this is a fantasy series where following the Wheel of Time as it turns... New Ages come and go, and the breaker of the world, the dragon, is now going to be reborn. So he broke the world, now he's going to save it. One of these four characters is the dragon. It could be woman or male. And Moraine Sedai, of the Aes Sedai, whatever it is, Aes Sedai. <laughs> um, and her water, Lan, go to this small town because the old blood runs there. And there's a balance of uh, medieval life and drama with a building tension. I think they did really well. There could be a pacing issue here and there. But you've got so much to do. I can only imagine what their uh, rhythm will be from episode to episode. Because there's just so much in the books. Oh, by the way, not only is it 14 books. Some books are a thousand pages, over a thousand, eight hundred. Every book is a monster. Every book. Well, maybe not the prequel or the, you know. And when you go back in the day, when you used to go to Walden's books and all that, they got, they were so big, they would break them up. So you would go and buy uh, book two, part one, book two, part two. Like, it would be broken. Uh, anyway. There's a lot, a big, heavy weight of information, uh, prophecy, foretelling, 
building a moment it's all in the books in insanely good ways how can you do that in the show i don't know but three episodes in and i'm really happy so that's a good sign uh they call the first one leave taking and it's a get to know the characters a mysterious woman in her water come in they're nervous they do things from the book they seem to really capture the flavor of the books and if you're gonna try it go for it. don't do what shannara did now i'm not a fan of um the game of thrones show and i'm a lesser fan of the books they're based on so this is another weird aspect where if you ask me the fighting in this and the setup is much better than game of thrones but game of thrones first season even i will admit was amazing second season like i got up to season three before i just couldn't take the nonsense but at least this is trying and if there's any indication of game of thrones where you saw not so good special effects horrible choreography and fighting but amazing story characters written well and portrayed amazingly carried it and then all of a sudden they get massive budget that's great this has a good enough start and even if it doesn't do that can keep an audience this is a good way to capture the flavor of a fantasy book magic between uh being portrayed um blade masters a high level skill you find out what a water is and the terminology they use in the book it's coming out in the show pretty good and it's such a burden it's so such a hard job when you know the books these books are very very um heavy on the language on the um premises set up the descriptions the pacing the um the grasp of battles and strategy methods and motivations there's so much to do in a novel that you gotta hope your actors and stuff can capture that because there's a lot you gotta skip there's a lot you gotta convey in just emotions and looking and thoughts and this show is capturing it for me right off the bat so the first episode basically ends with these monsters showing up, which is awesome. I love them from the books. I've used them in my world. I still use them. Um, Trollocs. And they start massacring this village. Um, oh, Moraine, Aes Sedai, Lon save them. And they make a point to show that these people will fight and they will die. And Moraine later tells a story about wit where the two rivers is uh from that type of thing however this builds up the tension it's so good yes there's an element of drama and relationships but it works for me here it, it not done overboard the actors are good enough you feel like there's a very good quality of getting actors you don't know who are very good, promising. You know, maybe you're just looking at their headshots or whatever. But to see it come together, some chemistry and the awkwardness of being in the positions they are in in their village and what's expected of them. It's just a really good foundation being built here. And it ends with some festival and the Trollocs come and Moraine has to take the four people she believes are uh, potential dragons reborn or a dragon reborn one of them she's sure one of them is but there's no indi you know you don't know yet and they gotta flee the village now one of the things you hear about with the shinara series is they didn't want to do book one because it was too much like lord of the ring that was a big fucking mistake there are a reason why people pay homages and why little things like this might feel like the hobbits fleeing their village and you know leaving their home it's because it works and it's done well it it's just a nice thing to see 
And in the Shinara series, they want to jump, drop you into book two, combine things, make three books, one half. It's, it just got silly, in my opinion. This really, really good. For me, looking at it, I could see season one being book one. And there's a, what is it, going to be eight? All right, so each season is eight episodes. That seems good for me. I would probably want more. Uh, I could see something like this going eight, eight, twelve, twelve. Like, you could see it gaining because even though the first books are big and they're thick and there's lots to read, when you get to the next series of books that come, it gets more expansive and more um, things are put in way better than Song of Ice and Fire, in my opinion. But, hey, it's not a contest in that way. But just what is just enjoyable, not an objective, good or bad. I'm really happy. End of the first episode, you get to the second episode, I think they're calling Shadows Waiting. And they show these, I don't know how, what we're going to call them in a sense, but they're, they're called White Cloaks. And they hunt Ace to die, and they burn them alive type thing. And It's portrayed very good. There's a craziness about them wearing white that works because, you know, you visualize these things in the book and to see it on screen. And the nuance of their place in the world where they are stamping out evil or so they think. And it's just, um, like, you know, like I said, I see so much that happens in the book happening already. And I'm hoping they do it good. But the fact that it's there, the fact that I'm smiling, I felt drawn back to the books immediately. Um, this is them fleeing, uh, like I said, you can consider this part of the Lord of the Rings movie where they, they have to flee their village, and they go to an evil place, and not even the Trollocs will enter. Again, the book, you might have different things, you might have different people in different situations in the book, there might be uh, dialogue said by someone else that didn't say this, that they didn't fit in, and they didn't do this. Whatever they're doing, it's working. Just like the Lord of the Rings. Like, I didn't care if Elrond's daughter said this when and it was said by someone else and they put things to make it, uh, she comes and she saves him. It's not Legolas. Like, it works. Do it well. And I can't say I'm right because, you know, my memory is shot, but I am really tied to the books here. I'm getting that connection it's bringing out the joy I had. Because remember, again, this is a series of novels I love. This is part of what shaped me being a fantasy, you know, geek in that way. Although I will say, my favorites still started when from coming from Dungeons and Dragons. So, the Dragonland series and all of them. I mean, every different thing. All the Forgotten Realms books. And let's not forget Tolkien and... Ari, um, Ari Salvatore, uh, Douglas Niles, just Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman. They, I felt like I found them as books, and they were like a treat that I found that I could show my friends. This was one of those things someone showed me. It was a long time ago, but... And I'm so happy it's being done well so far. And then, like I said, the second episodes, they go to an evil place that the Trollocs won't go. Uh, Moraine was wounded in the first one. It's still going with that. And I am excited for the third one. I'm like, oh, wow. This is... I gotta watch it. I gotta watch another one. And by the way, a brief thing about episode three is, guess what? By the end, I was almost drooling. Like I so want to see where this goes. Again, this could be bias. Yes. I do love the novels. They are doing a good job. Now, someone might say it's, they don't care about the novels. They're doing a bad job. And I can understand that. Maybe I'm not missing something because I'm just such a fanboy. This is amazing to me. Although, when you know, to get the actor to play Land, which I love, um, 
they refer to him as like the big man and he's like he doesn't look so big but you know dialogue from the book whatever and there's a little reveal I love, if you notice I'm not talking about major plot reveals and things I don't like to do that unless uh, there's some kind of conversation I'm doing a deeper dive but there's a thing revealed at the end of the second one that someone you thought was dead isn't type thing and there's a real power given to a certain character that you love to see and it's in the books holy shit do i love what they did with certain characters they stand out great act and by the way they stand out in a way where like i said before to me they seem like new actors and there's this awkwardness to them in the way they interact but it seems like that's what they would be a 17 year olds in real life in a medieval village like it feels real however you can see the underlying talent or ability there that's going to blossom. And it shows who one character immediately goes in the books. She is the um, first one you realize doesn't fuck around. And I don't mean Moraine or uh, Lan or some of the little things you see about the Aes Sedai hunting Dragon Reborns and men, men who can channel. And I'll get to that when I finish in my wrap up about the tone and the political type thing. But we're in the third episode. They've escaped this evil place. They're separated. I get to meet Tom Marilyn. Holy shit. This is a great actor playing a great role. And I was fucking so happy. They're showing a gleaming. A fucking bard from D&D basically. I think it's uh, Alexandria Willami. Uh, what a performance. They set it up. They frame it right. Cinematography. And then he sings a song and it's just... Everybody in the fucking place is like... Cra- you know, just, it's, it's, I don't want to give too much away. It's epic. He crosses through with the characters in a believable way. That seems... Um, plausible and then he actually gets to know one of the characters in a weird way and it connects things that you don't know about because i read the books and it's awesome holy shit tom merlin's one of my favorite great that they did him solid by the way i think everybody was done solid it's just there was this breakthrough performances in a way so i'll say naive and tom merlin just uh really made me smile and feel like I was in the books. Oh, man. Just, you don't see it much, you know? Well, let's not talk about the D&D book. And this shows um, how they split, what they're doing. Moraine is injured. Lane's taking care of her. And you got, like, three groups splitting up. And... There's a connection made between a group of Ace and Die who claim to have a man who says he's the Dragon Reborn and he's in a cage. Now, there are little nitpicks I mentioned, and one of them is the looks that I put into my head from the books that aren't matching, which is silly, I know. But this is not how I imagine Logan, or this is not how I imagine Eguine, or like. But when I look, because remember, you don't get to really see much of Logan and whatever. And I'm going to give it a pass because it's a silly nitpick. But looking at the ones I didn't agree with right away, like Eguine or whatever, immediately goes away once these actors come on the screen and do their thing. I mean, that's what they get paid for, right? I don't care. I don't care if you change the skin color, if I wasn't aware of it, or their hair, or what I envision. Because this is what your brain does when you read these novels. They'll always be in a, in a way better in that sense. But I am captivated. It's three episodes. Really good fantasy. We're talking magic, monsters, the classic get together, split apart. Yes, you might see. Connections to the Lord of the Rings and that type of story. But then again, if you analyze so many things like Star Wars and Magnificent Seven, Seven Samurai, these roots of storytelling are tried and true and they work. 
and it works beautifully here. I am so happy with the first three episodes. I'll get into a little bit of what I think is going to happen because I have avoided everything, and I mean everything. It's only after I do this that I'll um, really go and get a good look at what's out there. Uh, reviews on the show and expectations and all that stuff. Um, there's this aspect of the show that men try to cage the dark one, the essence of evil, and they failed. And then this failure tainted the connection between men and how they draw from the power, the source, whatever. And it drove them mad and all men eventually go mad if they touch the one power. And from what you can tell, in most cases, you don't have a choice. Meaning, you are going to channel magic or you're not. But if you're a man, that means eventually the more you draw on it, the more you touch it, the more whatever... You become insane, in a nutshell. And women have taken the place of right society. I fucking love it. I loved it in the book when I was young, teenager. What, like, this is no concept of people coming out now and saying, oh, woke, oh, this, and, um, you know, the agenda. But no, you know what? Sometimes the story is just a fucking story. It's not an exact connection. And yes, there might be uh, motivations and things and how it was set up, but I don't give a fuck. I'm here to be drawn into a series of novels that I love, to a fantasy series that could hold its own in storytelling, special effects, pacing, editing, cinematography, music, and it's doing well on every one. You might say the music isn't impactful enough, which is something you notice right away about Game of Thrones, but this could be a thing that just grows on you. <laughs> And there's only three episodes um, binge watched. I'm so happy and excited. I'm trying to actually calm myself with this podcast, but I've been doing these a lot. Uh, so, The Wheel of Time, based on Robert Jordan and his awesome work. There's some other guy you should give credit to, the guy who finished it up, and I think he really liked them and they worked together. A little bit of behind the scenes stuff that was always stuck with me, or well, since it happened, was there were problems with getting the rights to this. And when it started back in the day, a company to keep the rights put out a homemade fan thing. It sounds weird saying homemade fan thing, but you're talking about a probably a legit company. I think they used Billy Zane. And they did like a teaser for. A Wheel of Time, you know, a project they want to pitch. It was like a pitch product. And the wife, the widow of Robert Jordan said some negative shit about it and they sued her. Now, this was settled, but listen, if you're going to. If you have the rights, then they're legitimately yours, because that wasn't with the lawsuit, that wasn't with the... This is about you doing a product of her late husband's. You're doing a piss-poor shit job of it, pushing it out, and she gets to comment on it, and you guys sue her. So, fuck off. I never really wanted to back anything, if this company is connected still, all that stuff. So that's a hard pill to swallow. It's almost like MTV and my Shannara series. Um, I feel bad for Terry Brooks in that way. Not in that way. He's, he's just one of the best writers I've ever read to come across. Uh, best storytellers, hands down, for me in that way. But there was a man in a certain years of his life. He, they promised him they're going to stick to this and that. And he gives him the okay. And he's got to watch two seasons of that. And granted, they tried. Like I said, there are aspects of the Shinara series I enjoy. But you just see it. It's, it's, it's in the fabric of that show where 
you see the faults and they don't go away. Here, a couple of things might poke their head, but I think the same thing happened with Game of Thrones. I mean, I was so enthralled with Game of Thrones, but in the first season, as soon as one of the first sword fights happens, Mom, like, what? And I, I've discussed my problems. I did a podcast on it, but here we are. It's a great time. I wish it was just better things going on in my life. Like, this was just an awesome time. Um, in that case, but I am thrilled, excited. This is so far what I was looking for when Game of Thrones came out. And by the way, I don't really give a fuck in, in the sense of I understand. You can read my, you can listen to my Game of Thrones thing. I understand the quality, why it's touted as one of the best shows, and why it holds the prestige it does. Just not for me, in that sense. Um, I see this as having such potential for my love of enjoyment. I didn't feel like I was in D and D watching a uh, Game of Thrones. Never did. Um, right away, first two episodes, I'm in D and D in this. It's just um a real fun, exciting time. I am a lo- uh, okay. So I love Legends of the Seeker. It's another series of books, um, Terry Goodkind, which I really love. Uh, they get bogged down in their later books, so he's so-so, but it's the same author, so he gets blamed for it. But I don't care if, if it's a little... Uh, Xena, I watch Xena, or Hercules, eh, maybe not, but I'm a fan of those shows and accepted them for what they were. This could be the perfect blend of everything. It's not campy Xena and Hercules no fucking way. But what I loved about The Legends of the Seeker is the boldness of using magic and themes and sort of like character kits from the game I play. And it just adds to my love and enjoyment. I recommend... The Wheel of Time, the first three episodes, go watch this. It is fantasy series done insanely well. It's only three episodes, but when I judge a series, I usually give it a three-episode rule. Even if I went back right now and The Big Bang Theory, I would always watch the first three and then give my uh, assessment of, is it again, am I going to watch more? Am I going to be interested? On that basis, this passes everything. It doesn't have the most standout music. There's a little flaw here and there. But to me, it's a pilot episodes. And as you get wrapped up, everything goes away. I'll even say it's better than The Witcher. Hands down. The Witcher made a big mistake on trying to tell a nonlinear storyline. I had a friend sitting in confusion for many episodes. And some of the glaring mistakes you make with CGI were pronounced in that still love the witcher i love the portrayals the actors like i'm excited for that but if you want a comparison this in my opinion is better i see more potential in some of these characters and i don't know them rather than henry cavill and the character you know and the witcher this is the book's being brought to life for me, and yes, this all in this, in a sense, with saying, I recommend this, but I am biased. I do know that. It's one of my favorite series, and Robert Jordan's book, you can hold up and debate if they're better, whatever. There are so many people talking about how he took Tolkien's world and elevated it and evolved it. I can agree on that. That's how good these books are. That's how good these books are. But when you look at the language and the ease of storytelling, I go with Terry Brooks. So in a nutshell, The Wheel of Time, three episodes are out. I am excited. I am so happy. I am not disappointed. Trying to be critical thinker here, unbiased, but I can't in the sense of I know I'm going to go back. I'm going to rewatch them. I'll notice the thing. And like I said, you got a big, big challenge here. 
huge, huge books. Call them bloated, whatever, but it's done so well. A, a mass of knowledge and history are in these books, and they've got to do this in dialogue, keep people going every week. They're doing a good job. Watch The Wheel of Time. Leave me a comment, like, do all that nonsense bullshit, and I hope to hear from you soon. I wish everybody the best. Take care.